ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له سبحانه سبحانه كتب على نفسه البقاء وعلى خلقه الفناء وهو الحي الدائم الذي لا يموت واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومصطفانا وقائدنا ومعلمنا وقرة اعيننا محمد رسول الله الصادق الوعد الامين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد ماي براذرز اند سيسترز كل عام وانتم بخير ورمضان كريم ومبارك تو ايفري ون اند تو ذا هول امه اللهم امين ماي توبيك توداي might be a little bit different because I am sure that sheikhs and khatibs before me talked about Ramadan and how to start and welcome Ramadan. So I wanted to talk about a risk provision. We all live in this life and everyone subhanallah has his commitments. We all have commitments. And we all hope for the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look for the best rizq for ourselves, for our family, for whom we take care of. And the Muslim, when it comes to this, the Muslim is very different when it comes to the way he or she looks at the issue of risk and provision. Yes, we all need the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have things to take care of. But the first thing we believe in is that this issue of risk is all about aqeedah and iman. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called himself a razzaq. Inna Allah huwa razzaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the main and best provider to everyone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah huwa razzaq. Dhul quwwati al Not only that. But we also believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed the rest and provision for everyone, even those who do not believe in Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest comes down all the time to everyone. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ مِسْقُوهِ For every single living creature on earth, its rizq, its provision is due from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْلَا كُلُّمْ فِي كِتَابٍ Everything is there by Allah. And we also believe that this rizq has been there since the day one, subhanallah, since we are in the wombs of our mothers. So no worries. It is all guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith narrated by Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radwanullah ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
when he talked about the first 120 days in ahadakum yujma'u khalquhu fi batni ummihi 40 yawman nutfa so for 40 days the creation of us of ourselves is like 40 days nutfa 40 days alaqa 40 days mudgha then allah sends an angel so this angel is there to write down to record four things first fayanfukhu fihi ar-ruh this angel will breathe life by the will and permission of allah in that creation in that human being and then he will write down and record four things number one is a risk <laughs> فَيُؤْمَرُوا بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيْهُ النَّوْسَةِ Subhanallah, the rest, what we do, our time in this life, and whether someone is happy or miserable in this life. So, since that time. So, my main point in this khutbah is, what are the keys of this risk? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq. And our risk is there. But how can we increase and bless our risk? Because it is all about barakah. And you see that every day in life, you might have the same thing I have. The same risk that somebody else has had. Somebody else has. But is it about the quantity or the baraka in your risk or my risk? So to get the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase your risk and to bless your risk and my risk, there are some keys for that. A number one key for our risk to be increased and to be blessed is Ta'atullah Azza wa Jalla. And the Qama, Ma'allah. To be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey Allah and to refrain from any kind of disobedience and sins that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَلَّوْ اسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ لَأَسْقَيْنَاهُمْ مَا أَنْغَلَقَ If they went on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they listen and obey and follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will send down water, rain, in abundance, which is a type of risk. Allah will send down all types of risk to people who follow Him and His way. And on the other hand, my brothers and sisters, because this is something that sometimes we do not pay attention to. When we go through, through tough times and life is going up and down and we have today, we don't have tomorrow and things are getting tough, sometimes we tend to fix as we call as bad enough. Oh, I did this, he did that. I went here, I went there, but we forget that we might did something that displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the thing. Disobedience blocks the risk. We have to pay attention to this. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ when people of towns have taqwa, Allah will send the khairat, the blessings, the rest from heavens and earth. Allah will open the doors of all that from both heavens and earth. And the Prophet 
in the hadith of Thawban radiyallahu ta'ala made it very simple and clear he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna rajula wa inna rajula la yuhramu rizqa bidhan bi yusib subhanallah he said that the man, the person the muslim might miss his rizq be deprived of his rizq because of the sin that he or she did or committed with them be and of course under the word ta'a or obedience or istiqama come many things for example a salah especially salat and fajr we need to compare between a day where we attend Salat al-Fajr and pray on time in the masjid and another day where Iyadu Billah when we miss Salat al-Fajr you know, keep sleeping till sun rises and then you miss Salat al-Fajr or I miss Salat al-Fajr compare between these two days how it feels, how it looks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a dua for this ummah so that their early mornings would be blessed qala allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuri oh allah bless the mornings the early mornings for my ummah so your rizq is more there at that time your day your time your everything will be blessed will be different subhanallah Completely different. Sadaq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One more thing under the ta'a and istiqama that increases the rest and makes it blessed is Silatul Rahim. Something, Ya Khwana subhanallah, and I always, I always feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves us no room for any excuse you can tell now how easy to stay in touch with your relatives your parents your brothers your sisters your kinship your rahim that's one way to keep your rest blessed and increased the prophet as we do in ramadan when ramadan starts we tend to call and say Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak, and make dua for each other. That has to be there all the time. Not only in Ramadan, not only in the Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha. Yes, if you please can move forward, Jazakumullah khair, so that brothers can have a place to sit. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqood, man zarrahu an yufsata lahu fi rizqi, wa yunsa'a lahu fi athari, fal yasil rahim. Whoever wants more risk and for his her life to be prolonged, to be full of barakah, then he or she should take care of their rahim, kinship, and relatives. The relation, that relation, when you stay in touch and you get the dua, that makes your rest to be blessed and increased. Also, my brothers and sisters, the issue of tawakkul. Tawakkul. When you have this certainty inside us, in our hearts, tawakkul and yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we rely on no one but Allah. Full tawakkul. The Prophet ﷺ gave a beautiful example. Maybe all of us know that hadith and that example. The hadith narrated by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. He said, if you really, if you have a true tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَوْ تَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِ You have this tawakkul, Allah will provide you the rizq, the way he provides the birds. تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرُوحُ بِطَالِ 
birds leave their nests in the morning with empty stomachs, just as fly. And by the end of the day, they come back to their nests, their homes with full stomachs. But they flew. And here comes the asbab, the means. We have to do it. You have to get up early and go to work. But again, the tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know that Allah will give me the rest. I have to do my best. That's why Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he saw a group of people sitting in the masjid after Salat al Jumu'ah, he said, Why are you sitting here? Who are you? They said, Nahnu al Mutawakkinu. We are the people of tawakkul. We have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are sitting in the masjid just praying and making it. He said, No, that's not tawakkul. Hada tawakkul. Bal antum al mutawakkil. You're pretending the tawakkul. Didn't you hear the ayah from Surah Al Jum'ah? Today is Jum'ah and you prayed Jum'ah, and Allah said in this, that surah named Al Jum'ah. فَإِذَا قُضِيَةَ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When Salah is over, go. وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Seek the rest. The fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can sit waiting for the rest to come down from heavens. Because heavens do not send down silver or gold. رضي الله تعالى عنه So, also, my brothers and sisters, Al-Istighfar. When you remember Allah and make dhikr, and again, what a great month, subhanallah. One of the blessings of Ramadan is that we are more attached to the Masjid and Quran and dhikr and dua. We have to keep that, to keep up the good work, not only in Ramadan. Staying in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think we still need to move forward. Jazakumullah khair. Are more people coming? Allahi barik fiqh. Please. Jazakumullah khair. Dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal. And on top of it is a stighfar. You keep saying astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah al-azim al-ladhi la ilaha illa wa al-hayya al-qayyum wa atubu ilayh. You ask Allah for forgiveness and to forgive our sins and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another key for the rest, to be there, to be blessed, to be increased. And that's the wasiyah, the advice of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam to his people. In Surah Nuh, قال, Ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah is all forgiving. Subhanallah. Because when you do so, your city sama alaykum midrara will come down from heaven. It is different types. Subhanallah. Allah will give you more of money and children. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارٍ Rivers, gardens, because of the istighfar. That's why he said صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارَ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلَّ هَمٍ فَرَجَا وَمِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْنْتُ أَلَيْهِ How many times, my brothers and sisters, we sit and say astaghfirullah when we have a problem. When we're going through a tough time or a hardship. Yes, you, you have to do the means and try to do something and find out, but the best way and the first way to find out is to sit and say, Ya Rabbi, please, forgive me. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Make a istighfar. 
So Allah will open the doors for you and me. مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارُ When you keep doing istighfar and making istighfar, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ هَمْ مِنْ فَرَجَ وَمِنْ كُلِّ ذُرْقِ مَخْرَجَ When you are stressed and depressed, Allah will give you ease, comfort, relief, and Allah will find you an exit to get out of this problem and hardship. Because you and I are inside that box of the problem. It's like a box. The problem is like a box. We're all in it when we have the problem. So you need a way out. And that way out comes through istighfar. Also, my brothers and sisters, is a shuk. When we say Alhamdulillah for the ni'am, Alhamdulillah that I have. Can any one of us count the ni'am of Allah? No. When ta'uddu ni'mat Allah, la tuhsuha. La tuhsuha. It's countless. And look at those who do not have. Say, Alhamdulillah. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَذِينًا لَكُمْ When you are grateful to Allah, thankful to Allah, say, Alhamdulillah, for the ni'am that I have, Allah will increase. And my brothers and sisters, the best way, yes, you can say, I can say, Alhamdulillah. Right? And do this and that. But the best way, the best way to thank Allah is when we do not use the ni'mah that we have from Allah to disobey. If anyone gives you anything or gives me anything and I use it against him or her, what do you expect? What should we expect? Allah has given us the money or the ni'am and we're going to disobey him. Using the ni'mah to disobey him. The best way of shukr after you refer the ni'mah to al-mun'am subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you say alhamdulillah is to make sure that the ni'mah that I have, I receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is used the way Allah wants it to be used. Not otherwise. Not otherwise. And finally, my sisters, one more key for the risk is when we give, when we share, we have one source of ni'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we said, provides the risk to everybody. But your risk might be different from my risk. So it, it comes in different forms and ways. And SubhanAllah in the hadith, that Allah subhanahu, the meaning of the hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because when Allah chooses you or me to give you the money, or whatever kind of risk, it's not because you are you are smart or I'm smart. It does not mean you are better than somebody else. But Allah has a hikmah. Allah has a reason and wisdom to choose and to pick some people and to give them more. The Prophet وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the meaning of the hadith again, is that Allah will give the ni'am to certain people. That's why Allah faddala ba'dakum ala ba'dim for rizq. Not everyone has the same level or type of rizq. We are different, even our rizq is different, right? So the Prophet said that Allah will choose or will choose some people to give them the rizq, to give them the money, whatever type of rizq, so that they will help others and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep that ni'mah in your hand and my hand in your pocket and in my pocket 
as long as we do help. And the Prophet said, when they stop helping, Allah will take it, give it to someone else to help. That's how it is. That's why when you give your zakah, when you give your sadaqah, that's a great way to open for yourself more doors of rest, more ways of rest, to bless what you have, to make it mubarakah. Ibn Adam Anfa Subhanallah, it comes from Allah and He's the one who said, Get. So it's, it's Malillah, as Allah said. So this is the money of Allah, this is the mal of Allah, gave it to you and me. He said, Spend, give a part of it, share, and I will give you more. Whatever you spend, Allah will replace it for sure. And again, this is again goes back to Yaqeen. That's why the Prophet وسلم, called a sadaqa burhan. Proof. For what? Proof that you have? No. Proof that you're better than others? No. Proof that you got it because of your intelligence and education or whatever? No. It's all known. It's a proof of Iman. Because if I have $1,000 today and I give part of it or half of it or all of it for Allah, I do believe that Allah will give me more than that. It did not increase, uh, decrease, it increased by this. So Sadaqah is all about Yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get and we have the Yaqeen and certainty and belief in Allah that my account did not decrease, it increased. Although math-wise, now, when I look at my statement, it went down, but I know it's coming. Coming in a form of barakah, for more money. I don't get sick. My wife is happy. My car is okay. It's all types of risk. Look at people. Subhanallah. You, you, yeah, subhanallah. You see things in life, your son get, gets an injury and he goes to the ER for like a couple of hours and they just do a little thing and you pay off, for example, $100. Allah can save that for you or me. So that's why every day Allah sends down in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Abu Huraira sends down two angels, one makes dua for the one who spends. And one makes that against the one who does not sin. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in Ramadan, especially in Ramadan, to do more. It's a, it's a time, as the Prophet said in the hadith, that the risk will be increased in Ramadan, in the movement. So, but we have to get that through the ways that Allah and Prophet shared with us. Allahumma ameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the risk and bless our risk. And help us to have, to serve him in Ramadan the best way he wants. Subhanahu wa taala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and sisters, one more time, كل عام وأنتم بخير. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make this Ramadan a great and blessed Ramadan to everyone and for everyone, especially those who are away from us, those who are suffering. And those who are need who are in need of our help. I came today as usual, as usual, to this blessed community and great masjid uh, on behalf of Islamic Relief. And I have uh, to share with you uh, uh, the work that Islamic Relief does for Syria. Alhamdulillah, you know, as you know, Islamic Relief is the biggest Muslim NGO, and we work in 40 countries. And Islamic Relief has 6 million beneficiaries who benefit from the zakah and sadaqah given by uh, Muslims and also sometimes by non-Muslims, uh, subhanAllah, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So, and we are here today for Syria. And I don't feel in any way talking about Syria and what's happening in Syria. For four years now, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease their situation. And to ease the situation, every single Muslim everywhere, 
because we have a lot of Muslims suffering. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Islamic Relief as one, one of the organizations that work hard to, to, to serve as many Muslims, as, as many people as we can. We have Muslims in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Burma. Who hears about Muslims in Burma, what's happening to them? Wallahi, terrible. Our brothers and sisters in Iraq and Palestine and in Yemen, but Alhamdulillah Islamic Relief is thriving. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we, uh, we have in Ramadan hundreds of events between khutbahs and you know uh, taraweeh and uh, dinners to, to serve all those people as much as we can. So I hope, inshallah, that you give us five minutes of your time to share at the beginning of this great month, inshallah, your zakah or your sadaqah to the people of Syria, inside and outside Islamic Republic, inside Syria. It's helping the people in Halab and Wama Adraka Maha. We all know what's happening in Halab. Even in Ramadan, even in Ramadan, subhanallah, a couple of weeks ago, the Jum'ah was not, Salat al Jum'ah was not performed in Halab for the first time in history. Why? Because the Sheikh said, you do not gather even for Salat al Jum'ah, people will die in the midst. We, we all know that. People in other areas in Syria had to eat grass just to survive. Again, Islamic Relief is, an, is, a, is a humanitarian organization. And we're not here to talk about any kind of politics. We are just here to help people eat, drink, and have access to medicine when they are injured or dying because of sicknesses. And we're here for kids who lost their parents, or one of them are here for infants. We are here for orphans and widows. We are here to ask you, please help us. You're not doing this for me, for Islamic Relief, for anyone. You're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess what? It is an obligation and you're doing a favor to yourself because the credit will go before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to your account before it goes to them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the upper hand, my brothers and sisters. It's great to have the upper hand, to have the ni'mah and to share. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us not to be in this situation anytime or our kids or our family. So please, inshallah, the Prophet said, Afdalus sadaqa sadaqatun fi Ramadan. The best sadaqa you give is the sadaqa you give in Ramadan. So please, inshallah, help yourself, help Islamic Relief, help your brothers and sisters in Syria, inshallah, uh, after Salat al-Jum'ah. Jazakumullahu khayran. Asallahu azza wa jalla an yaj'ala jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma wa tafarruqana ba'dahu tafarruqan masuma. Allahumma la taj'al fina wa la baynana wa la hawlana shaqiyan wa la mahruma. اللهم اجعل هذا الشهر شهرا مباركا كريما عظيما لهذه الأمة جمعاء يا رب العالمين اجعلنا فيه من المقبولين اغفر لآبائنا وأمهاتنا وتقبل فيه صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا فيه من المقبولين واجعلنا فيه من عتقائك من النار يا رب العالمين اللهم أحينا حتى نهاية رمضان وحتى ترضى عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم كل المسلمين في هذا الشهر يا رب العالمين اللهم إنهم صائمون يا رب العالمين اللهم خفف عنهم آمن روعاتهم واسر عوراتهم اللهم احقن دماءهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كل إخواننا في كل مكان يا رب العالمين الله أو الله help Muslims everywhere يا رب العالمين Oh Allah, protect Muslims everywhere, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, help all Muslims everywhere, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ihqan dima'a al-Muslimin, wassur awrat al-Muslimin, wa amin rawaat al-Muslimin, wa ansur al-Islam wa a'izz al-Muslimin. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.